Welcome to Cajona's Icons. And actually today we're coming from one of my favorite restaurants here in London, in Primrose Hill, called Limonia, or Limonia, however you want to pronounce it. Now, today's guest, I always say it, is a very special guest. She is, well, successful entrepreneur, mumtrepreneur, as she would call it, obviously the face of Dragon's Den. She is, of course, Sarah Willingham. Sarah, lovely to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you for having uh, me. Uh, obviously, she's a dragon, but she's not going to spit fire at me, I hope. <laughs> but uh, Sarah, you know, you are an example to all, Well, I think. Big statement, that. Okay, it's a big statement. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. I want to know, you're, you know, you're a successful entrepreneur. You've won several accolades for your achievements. How did it all start? Were you always a sort of business-minded from a young age with that with that that level of audacity that courage that you've had I have always been um, I don't think I was a born entrepreneur at all I think you know some you, you read some books and hear some amazing stories about kids that you know started their first business when they were four it, that wasn't me at all I, I actually love to learn mm. really love to learn and when I was always fascinated with business, didn't realise that was what it was, but always fascinated by the fact that we had the same, we were wearing the same brands as kids, we had the same stuff in our fridges. You know, how did this work? Who was this Mr. Coca-Cola that made us all buy Coca-Cola? What was it? So I was always really interested in that. So it's marketing, I think, interested me and how that influenced us as consumers. But I didn't have this desire to have my own business at all. It was so alien to me. It was not, I didn't grow up in a world where having your own business was the norm. Mm. Um, and then I went to university, studied business, and found my sort of passion for food and business and managed to mold the two together and ended up working at Planet Hollywood. And I loved that. And actually, I probably would have stayed working for somebody else if it wasn't for the fact that my life goals changed so as I got through my 20s I realized I thought, god I really want a big family um, I want to be able to control my diary to an extent so not my destiny because I don't believe in that but my diary um, and they were really that was really important to me and I wanted to succeed in something that I set out to 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 try and a goal that I set out in business and that's what made me leave I guess the corporate world and that's what made me become an entrepreneur, as it were. And, and I mean, being a woman in the business world, how much harder do you think that is? Because some would say it's still, if you like, a man's world. Mm. You're going to say to the contrary, of course. Um, would you say that it's harder for a woman to make it in the business world? It's a really, I mean, it's such an enormous subject and such a big question. I think it is harder for any minority in in any aspect of life if you're a minority you're obviously fighting more because you're not part of the the masses um one thing i've always said to women is you know in a room full of gray suits who do you think they're going to remember you know be the person that stands out allow yourself to be the person that's different you know in my day like i'm 44 now so we're going back 20 years in my day, I was the only woman in the in the boardroom. I was the only woman in 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 my peers at my level, but it didn't hinder me in the sense that I was actually good at what I did. So, who do they remember? You know, do they remember another grey suit that's good at his job, or do they remember the, the person who's a bit different who's good at their job? Well, I always say to you people, know, why are you afraid? Why, why are you so busy trying to fit in when you were born to stand out? Yeah. But, yeah, you're but right. still, would you say that being a woman in the corporate world and being in the business world takes that little bit of extra push that you think, need? Yeah, I think what's really difficult um, for women is I'm a really strong believer that you can't fight nature um, because nature will always win without a shadow of a doubt, whatever, in any aspect of life. And if you are a woman who, for example, wants to have children, you can't fight the fact that that baby grows inside you and then you actually give birth and you then have these children that you may want to nurture. Now, if that's the case, and of course that's not the case for everybody, but if that is your case, that is a difficult balance. It's a really difficult balance. And it's, it's, I think it's at those times 
when it's a real struggle for women. That's very difficult. I mean, you're, you call yourself a mum entrepreneur. I mean, how, how does that work? I mean, <laughs> I've got one child, <laughs> four children, yeah. and a successful businesswoman. Something had to give. Something has, to give, didn't it? something has to give all the time. Um, I mean, anybody who thinks it's not a compromise and you can have it all, I don't believe anybody has it all. We all compromise. So if you decide that you want to focus as a man, you decide, man or a woman, you want to focus all on your career, then of course something, something has to give the other side. Um, what I do, which makes me sound really boring, but um, is I kind of look at time in a sort of pie chart like a circle of time and at the beginning of the year I look at well how do I want to spend my time now if you look over the years the segments in that pie chart have really changed so in my 20s so in my 20s I was very very driven with work and I did do the 100 hour, hour weeks and I loved it I wouldn't swap it for the world and you know, I took my four or five weeks holiday a year and I traveled when I could, but it was, it, to be honest, it was all about work. Of course, then when I, not of course, but then when I had children, that circle changed. So now if I were to draw my pie chart, the work segment would be much smaller and mm. much less driven. I love what I do. I want to work. It's a very important segment of my time, but so's my family, so's travel, so's health and fitness, so's family. You know, it's, there are lots of different things that sure. in my 20s it was different. So I think it's just very important to, to look at it as an overall. This is, this is all I have. You've got 24 hours a day. That's all, you, you know, that's all you've got. You've got to sleep. You need to stay fit and healthy. You need to be a mate. You need to be a son or a daughter. You need to be a brother or a sister. Or you need to, you know, you need to be a mom. Or whatever, whatever those things are and you want to work. So, of course, there's a compromise, because if you put 80% work, you've only got 20% for the rest of it. But if you put 80% everything else and only 20% work, then you're compromising on your work. So it's all, of course, a compromise, and you have to decide your balance. But do you find that some things, like you say that you plan the year in a pie chart, as time passes, as days go by, you think, actually, I'm spending a bit too much time on this, I'm spending a bit too much time on that. Sure, you've got to take a you've got to take a rain check from time to time. All the time, I take a rain check on a daily basis, daily basis, um, and I'm very lucky actually. I feel it when I'm out of sync. Like if I've been working, so for example, something like filming Dragons Den, that's a lot, right? I'm away from home a lot. Um, I'm in Manchester. I'm all about work. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm all in. These are massive days where there's nothing else. There's no health and fitness. There's no family. There's yeah. no friends. There's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of all in. And, you know, by the end of it, I'm like, oh, my God. You know, firstly, I want to go on a health retreat. You know, secondly, I want to lock myself in a small room with my children and dig a little hole and cocoon. You know, and that's so then you have to counterbalance if you when you do something really extreme you have to counterbalance it with with whatever whatever it is that you feel that you missed out on in that time I, I can ask you have you always been a gutsy self-confident person you seem very very confident very self-confident um, bold which you needed to be to be successful in what you've done do you feel where does that come from I think, so, yeah, so I don't think I've always been confident, but I've always been strong, if that makes sense. Like, I, I'm strong in my tummy. Do you mean resilient? Yeah, I'm, I am resilient, and I, I was lucky, um, very lucky. I had a very secure upbringing. I had mum and dad, very normal life, brother, they had normal jobs, they were great, there was no pressure, I, I just bumbled along. My mates are still the mates, my best mates are still the kids that I met when I was at primary school in Stoke. You know, it's a very secure footing for somebody to, to be allowed to fly, mm. if that makes sense. It didn't constrict me, um, make me smaller in any way, nobody ever clipped my wings. That was nice, and, and I, I'm very, very lucky to have had that. I think the confidence thing, I have constantly suffered from imposter syndrome my 
whole life, I mean my whole life, even walking into the den, I was like, I can't believe I'm actually sat in one of those chairs, I'm not somebody walking through the lift, I, I couldn't believe it. So whatever it is, I'm always, you know, mom, I think this is it, you know, I've really bitten off more than I can chew. She's like, you've said that since you were 18, Sarah, you're so you going to be have fine. The, you do have the, uh, totally the, the negative sort of self-talk. and Totally. Totally, and I think that's very normal. What do you do to overcome that? Because you must have need, you must have had that. Yeah. Setting up business. Yes. Uh, yes. Doing all the doing all the business. Phone my mom. That's like I do phone my mom, and I'm like, mom, this is it. I'm, I really have bitten off more than I can chew, and she reminds me of all the other times in my life that I've said that. Yeah. And then I remember that this is actually just about pushing my comfort zone, and that's a great thing. Yeah. And I'm so lucky that I have constantly pushed my comfort zone. And also I need it. Like I actually get very bored very quickly. Mm. So as much as I might go, oh, what have I done? It's me that did it. And I have to remember it's my whirlwind. Are you a good sleeper, Sarah? Because I am many a business great people, sleeper. Oh, because many business people when things are a little bit yeah. rocky, they suffer from mm. bad sleep and anxiety and what have you. You don't have that, ever had that issue? No, but remember I don't run anything now. You know, that's also very important. You know, I have had those sleepless nights. Mm. I have been there and that's that's really difficult place to be. And I have but I don't run anything now. I invest so I work with others. So those businesses are all reliant on somebody else getting up in the morning. Yeah. Um so yeah, when I when I close my eyes on the pillow it's rare that I have, that something's happening. You know, I just, I just sleep. But that's been a long time coming, right? You know, that's, that's a lot of work that has got me to that point where it's not my stress anymore. And, and how, did the, how did the Dragon's Den gig come about then? That was really random. I mean, I had no, um, no plans to do any TV or, 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 or anything. And I just got a phone call. Uh, and an email in my inbox saying, would you come along to screen test for this, this series of Dragon's Den? And I had think you watched it before? I had, of course, yes. Every, I mean, you know, Dragon's Den is Dragon's Den, isn't it? Um, so I, I think their first plan had fallen through, so this is quite last minute. But they screen tested loads of women and they were still screen testing loads more women. And I just thought, well, it'd be great. I'll go along central London, get to meet Deborah Meaden. That'll be great. Didn't for a second, again, of course, you know, didn't for a second think that I would end up getting it. And I hardly, it didn't even register that much to begin with. Went along, had a great day, loved meeting Deborah. She was lovely, had some fun. There was a guy pitching um, large chocolate, big chocolate buttons that made hot chocolate and some posh marshmallows. It was really good fun, I loved it. And then I get a text a couple of days later saying, you know, you've made it through to the last three. And I was like, oh God. I said to Michael, I said, you know, that thing I did on Monday, like this might actually happen. We need to think about this, you know, so, and I was so lucky. And then the next thing I was, yeah, they offered, they said, would you like to be our new dragon? And I was like, yes. So yeah, it was really That's cool. It was story. amazing, it was amazing. But what do you, what do you say to, to women out there particularly? Because this is about cojones, which some would say is cheeky. It means ballsiness, it means courage, yeah. audacity. And um, what would you say to women out there who want to juggle motherhood with business? Yeah. And what about or people who, or, or women who just want to concentrate on business, but they have that little bit of air of daunt, da being daunted? Yeah. How would you, what would you advise? What would Sarah well, Williams say First of them? all, I would say everybody has that. So we are, everybody's hustling to an extent. So don't for a second think that you're the only person sat there thinking, I'm not sure I can do this because we all do it. And frankly, those that don't are, that's, you know, in, at times that's probably blind ignorance. You know, if you are stepping outside of your comfort zone, nobody really knows the outcome. So firstly, you're, everybody's hustling to an extent. Everybody is, everybody is, trying to find their way and pushing their comfort zone, trying to do new stuff. So that's okay. So it's okay to feel that fear, but use it and go with it. Don't be the person that looks back and your legacy is, oh, I had this great idea, but I didn't dare do it. Don't be that person. You'll never forgive yourself. 
give it a go. Failure is fine, mistakes are fine. You pick yourself up, dust yourself off. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you don't risk the absolute fundamentals in your life, the things that you need. It might be your family, it might be the roof over your head. Whatever it is, mitigate your, stop your risk at a point where it's too much and then do it. It's similar to what, to what Barry Hearn said. We had Barry Hearn on here, I don't know if you know him, but uh, he said if you, if you do your work, you'll pass the exam. And of course, he, said, he talks about calculated risk. Because a number of the people who go on to Dragon's Den, yeah. it's entertainment at the end of the day, and a lot of people go on there pitching the most ridiculous things. Yeah. I guess they put them on there really for the TV aspect. But um, those people haven't done, really done their homework. But I guess once you've done your homework, which is a very important part, mm. then you've got to throw them a bit of caution to the wind. Totally. You've got to go for it, right? Every single thing that I've ever done in my life, I have said, what is my ultimate downside? Ultimate downside here. And if I can handle that, I've done it. So I've always looked. I've never, ever taken a risk that is not being calculated. I've never risked the ultimate. I've never risked something that I couldn't handle. Mm. Um, and I've taken what a lot of other people might consider to be very big risks. So let's say, for example, I've left a very well-paid corporate job um, with no money at all, gone back to live with my mom to start a business, you know, hustling my way, just trying to make it work. Now, I was like, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? It all goes wrong. And in two years time, I go back and get another corporate job. That's what I, that's in my head what I was thinking. You know, so you're gonna... also sizing up the risks, so sizing up the downside, and, and, then, and then going for it. As a foodie, of course, what, what, what food do you, are you a good cook? I am actually. I'm not a chef, I'm not skilled, um, but it's my big passion. It is. So if I ever have, I mean, I cook all the time for my kids and cook for, as a family, we eat together all the time. Um, but that's my de stress. That is how I wind down. I, if I have. If I've ever really got something on my mind, I just take to the kitchen. You'll just see me bake. I just bake. I go mad. I'll spend all day producing stuff in my kitchen. Um, and it's how I kind of get rid of stress. And, and, and obviously, as, as the former owner of the Bombay Bicycle Club, Club, you used to yeah. involved with Bombay Bicycle No, Bicycle no, Club? Not, at all, not for years, my God, like 10 years nearly. When I saw, I have to say, when I saw Bombay Bicycle Club, there used to be one in Finchley Road. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah. Because I, I didn't know what it's a funny name for a, for, a, for a restaurant, but obviously you did very well. Uh, are you a big fan of Indian food? Or? Oh, love Indian food. It's got to be my favourite takeaway. Favourite takeaway, Indian food. Nothing beats good curry. And I'm lucky that I have I have taken home the ability to cook some pretty nice curry. Really? Yeah, from, from my days at Bombay. Well, there you have it. Well, <laughs> Sarah, you, you've been great. And I know that you, you know, we're restricted on time, but you, you know, you've given me an insight into the mind of Sarah Willingham into the successes of Sarah Willingham and hopefully you guys out there can take something from that and I think you know we can all learn from this as we do from all the the icons that we have on here I have an apology to make normally we, we give our our guests a couple of gifts I have got one of them oh but I did forget exciting. the other one and oh. that was down to me <laughs> rushing I'm ever so sorry but one of them is of course the the special edition I say special edition we've had a few icons on here now the special edition Kahona's t-shirt of course for you to wear on your travels. Sarah is a relentless traveller so next time you're walking along the Himalayas or whatever you're look. doing on, on the ski resort Grow you can then success. you can then wear your t-shirt because really Great that is the message that you would possibly say to, to all those people watching out there as well perhaps. Yeah, I would say... You may say it a little I'd bit differently. But I'd probably say it a little bit differently, but I would say just don't let fear stand in the way of success, basically. So allow, work with your fear and allow it to become part of your strengths. Um, make it work for you. And the only thing to fear in life, really, so they say, is fear itself. Apparently. Anyway, on that bombshell, <laughs> okay, I want to thank Sarah very much. Thank you for having it's me. It's been very nice to meet you. In my finally. favourite restaurant as well. In our yeah, favourite yeah, restaurant, yeah. I must Absolutely. add. Absolutely. And um, no doubt we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Catch us on uh, Twitter, at Real Cojones, Cojones, or as my mother would say, Co Jones, <laughs> at Real Co Jones. Um, Facebook, 
check out the website, and of course follow us on here. Thank you very much.